And, you know, I mean, even now in this age, there's been so much division uh, right now because of, oh, are you left or are you right? You know, are you a Democrat or are you a Republican? And again, you know, in a sense, Jesus doesn't really take sides. He, you know, we need to get on his side. Like I love, you know, uh, again, with Joshua, he encountered the angel of the Lord and the angel rebuked and corrected him and said, it's not whether or not I'm for you or I'm against you, but it's, are you on my side? Are you on the side of the Lord? And I feel like, again, like, you know, it's not about, are you an elephant or are you a donkey? Even though the Republican party currently you know, it has much more biblical values and biblical truths. And, you know, it is citing uh, a lot of things that God cares about. And I think this is so obvious. But at the same time, Marcus, the Lord spoke to me maybe a few months ago. And I know it was the Lord. He said, if I can use a donkey in the Bible to speak, then why can't I still use the donkey party in the United States for my good and for my goodness? Or, I mean, we may not agree and we may not enjoy and agree with the policies and all these things. But still, at the same time, God will use the donkey party for his glory. God will use the elephant. God will use any animal. God will use any human being. God will turn it around for his good, for his glory, for his purpose, no matter what, in the end. So the word of God is true, and it's uh, over-encompassing over all things. So I But Prophecy USA, the Lord loves America, the United States. He loves President Trump. He loves unity. He loves the church. There's been so many prophetic words over Chicago, California. I'm in California now. I'm in Los Angeles. So many prophetic words being released. We're in a new year. And, uh, you know, there's just so much to talk about. And, uh, you know, I love uh, the mantle that you carry. First and foremost, I honor you as well for serving in the American, the United States military. I want it to be a military man, uh, but they, they denied me because of my past criminal record as a minor. But now I serve the Lord full time, all the time in Jesus name. Mm -hmm. But uh, Marcus, before we just go uh, into some of the topics here, uh, and as we start off Prophecy USA, what is on your heart right now, Marcus? Um, just looking at what's going on in the world. And I realize that a lot of people, um, they don't really want to they don't really want to see the truth when it comes to certain subjects and certain issues. Um, we have a big problem with, you know, America being such a melting pot and because of the history in America, uh, racial tension and things like that. A lot of times people have this like loyalty to their culture, loyalty to their race. And I feel that uh, sometimes there's, you know, legit reasons and legit concerns um, that we have to face in America. But at the same time, it also blocks believers and Christians from sometimes seeing the whole full truth of what God wants to do. And so God's raising up a generation of people that are going to say what does say the Lord, and it's not going to be popular. But then if you look at the Bible, most of the prophets in the Bible, the things that they spoke about were not always, for the most part, well received by the people. But God is going to raise up some people who have the backbone to do it. They don't care about fame. They don't care about likes, shares, followers, or having a mega church. They just want to do what the Lord is you know, calling them to do. Come on. So good. I, I love that you started off with that, Brother Marcus, because, you know, there's a big difference between kingdom and culture. And, you know, I'm Asian American. Uh, you're African American. But a lot of times, I mean, we can say, listen, I'm putting my race. I'm putting my background. I'm putting my history, my ethnic background. And, uh, you know, I think there's just so much uh prejudice that's still happening even in the church i mean we talk yes. about unity but you know does it doesn't have to be gospel or you know does it have to be you know uh you know uh, ccm you know and so there's all these different little divisions and these little names and these little titles even within the church but it has to be kingdom it has to be born of the mm -hmm. spirit of god and i think that's really one of the cries of our millennial generation uh, you know, I believe you are a millennial, Marcus, but of our millennial generation, there's a cry for unity where we're saying, you know, but again, it's it's not communism or socialism where mm -hmm. everything is the same, you know, but right. there's a real unity because we celebrate diversity. We don't ignore diversity. I mean, it's obvious, but at the same time, we're putting the truth of the Bible, the word and uh, the kingdom culture above all those things. Go ahead, Marcus. Uh, yeah, just very shortly on that, I believe that we would be able to connect if it wasn't for a couple of things, old wounds. You know, there are, there is a history in America that's not too pretty. But then also, if we are believers and we say that we share the same spirit of God, 
then our spirit would, should be able to bear witness with one another when it comes to the truth. We should be able to unite under the truth. But the problem is there's a lot of people who are speaking on God's behalf and they're not speaking what the spirit says. They're speaking what they feel and then saying God told them that. And, and that's the problem. So there's a lot of hypocrisy. There's a lot of fakeness. There's a lot of you know, just tainted um, um, prophecies with people's own personal agendas. And they're speaking from a place where, you know, the Bible says, don't lean on your own understanding. And so that's why it's even so hard because, you know, everybody's prophesying now, everybody's doing all this kind of stuff. And so a lot of baby Christians and even people in the world, they don't even know who to listen to. And uh, that's one of the saddest things that the church is not united because of, of, of pride and because of prejudice and these things, because everybody else in the world is uniting. If you go, you know, to one of these marches uh, that they have there, and there's numerous kind of marches, they have black people, white people, Hispanic people, and they're united for one cause. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Yeah, so I believe that if you're in your church and you're lifting up Jesus truly without an agenda, you should have all kinds of people coming. And that's how heaven's going to be, brother. So, I mean, if you have a problem with that down here in this earth, I mean, I don't know why you want to go to heaven because it's going to be very diverse. That's so good. Yeah, why would you go to heaven? Because it's so diverse. Every nation, every tribe, every tongue, every background, of uh, chief of sinners, sinners from all kinds of backgrounds. doesn't matter what level or what type of sin you're into. I mean, you know, we're all sinners and we've been born again as, as saints and sons and daughters of God. But I really like what you were saying earlier. Uh, you know, just again, the filter, the cultural filter. And, and, you know, I mean, even now in this age, there's been so much division uh, right now because of, oh, are you left or are you right? You know, are you a Democrat or are you a Republican? And again, you know, in a sense, Jesus doesn't really take sides. He, you know, we need to get on his side. Like I love, you know, uh, again, with Joshua, he encountered the angel of the Lord and the angel rebuked and corrected him and said, it's not whether or not I'm for you or I'm against you, but it's, are you on my side? Are you on the side of the Lord? And I feel like, again, like, you know, it's not about are you an elephant or are you a donkey, even though the Republican Party currently, you know, has much more biblical values and biblical truths. And, you know, it is citing uh, a lot of things that God cares about. And I think this is so obvious. But at the same time, Marcus, the Lord spoke to me maybe a few months ago. And I know it was the Lord. He said, if I can use a donkey in the Bible to speak, then why can't I still use the donkey party in the United States for my good and for my goodness. Or, I mean, we may not agree, we may not enjoy and agree with the policies and all these things, but still at the same time, God will use the donkey party for his glory. God will use the elephant, God will use any animal, God will use any human being, God will turn it around for his good, for his glory, for his purpose, no matter what in the end. So the word of God is true and it's uh, over encompassing over all things. So I think even now, Marcus, before I pass the mic to you and we, we begin to talk about certain things, uh, you know, I really feel again, you know, we need to look at the policies. You know, we need to uh, not attack President Trump. First and foremost, we need to be biblical. We need to be Christian. We need to pray. We need to protect. We need to walk in honor honor uh, the structures and the systems that God's put. But at the same time, this is a real war and a fight I mean, against our future and against our children. You know, it's a fight and it's a war against the innocence of the next generation. Our generation is coming forth. So therefore, we do need to preach the truth. We do need to be unapologetic. We, we need to not be PC, politically correct and afraid. And we need to preach the gospel of truth and there will be freedom. There will be healing. There will be deliverance. Uh, you know, I know I'm preaching right now, but you know, if somebody has a plank in their eye and of course I have a speck, but at the same time, you know, we need to help people and say, listen, I'm in a process. You're in a process, but I want to help you point you to the truth instead of you dying and drowning in the water and the river. And I think again, tolerance which has been so askewed and manipulated and so filled with confusion and deception and you know this whole thing of you know uh, ignorance god wants us to be filled with wisdom and to be filled with truth which is different from information cnn msnbc all these things but god is over all things he's greater in all things and uh you know we're we're so excited marcus anything you want to say on that Man, I, I guess I'm going to just go ahead and, and dive in. And what I'm about to say is not going to be very, uh, you know, politically correct. But number one, what you said, God 
Um, he used people all throughout the Bible for his will. That's what people don't understand. He used King Nebuchadnezzar, uh, Nebuchadnezzar. He used the Babylonians. He used King Cyrus. The Bible says that even a tormenting spirit was sent to King Saul mm. by the Lord. Even what happened with Job, okay? So uh, we can dive into the Bible verses a little bit later, I'm pretty sure, where we, we can show this in the Bible. But God is always in control. President Trump is not president by accident. Obama was not president by accident. God is in control. So what we have to do as believers, one of the things that God told me, he said, when, when you look at it, it's like a chessboard. Don't get caught up in the colors that you see. Some people say, well, I'm just going to follow the white team. Some people say, I'm just going to follow the black team. The Lord said, look at the moves that, are, that they're making. Don't, don't get caught up in what color it is. Look at the moves that are being made. And if you be honest, people say, you know, President Trump is racist, right? That's like the big thing that people are always saying that disqualify him. Well, Christians, how can you support this guy that is so racist? But the reality is, if you look at the facts and you do your research, he's not doing anything that President Obama and Hillary Clinton did not do. And I've, and I've talked about this over in the cages were built under Obama. Hillary Clinton is quoted talking about building a fence and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, Obama said, you know, don't send your children over here. I'm going to send it back. So all kinds of stuff. So what happens is I believe that God allowed President Trump to be in office. He says he's going to use the foolish yeah. things to confound the wise yeah. because he wants to make it where you have to see in the spirit. If it was some nice, charismatic guy, you know, and he was saying all the right stuff, it would be easy to be like, oh, this is from God. But the Lord puts people like him in place. So it's not easy. you got to pray. You have to ask God to open my eyes. And that's not saying that he's perfect. That's not saying that he's a saint. But the Bible says to judge with righteous judgment. So if I begin to put the, the parties on the scale and I see how they're for abortions and I see how they're pushing this LGBTQ agenda, you can say he's racist, right? I, if, if you want to believe that, I won't even argue with that. But when you start weighing it up on the scales, it tips very hard, okay, in the Democratic Party that they're pushing the Antichrist agenda. And they and the problem is they're so liberal because they're so hungry for power that they're just willing to let anything go. We'll, we'll say whatever we got to say to get the vote. And that's what's creating that collision here in America. Yeah, I know there's so much uh, you can say here. I want to say one mm -hmm. thing before I pass the mic to you. You know, one thing that the Lord showed me, Marcus, was that the left, uh, you know, they're targeting two specific parties majorly, okay? Two specific groups of people. And the Lord began speaking to me saying the minorities and the millennials, okay? The Democrats, the left, they're specifically targeting the millennials through social media, through propaganda, through uh, the human social justice side and the millennials and the youth and the young people, uh, you know, by trying to be more tolerant and acceptable. Oh, I'm not a xenophobe or, you know, I, right. you know, I, I love Muslims or, you know, all these different things. So the left is trying to release propaganda, false news information so that, you know, the uh, millennials, the young people, We'll, we'll be brainwashed and we'll mm -hmm. kind of have this uh, socialistic, made up, fake, utopia, heavenly community. But it's a fake utopia. You know, it's a fake heaven. You know, it's it's, it's the one world order, not the new world order. Right. And so so now there's mind games, control, manipulation with that. And now the minorities, you know, I'm a minority considered in mm -hmm. a sense. You're a minority. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, anybody in the United States that's not white Caucasian background is considered a minority. But, uh, you know, but we're seeing minority ethnic groups. I'm Asian American. My parents, you know, uh, were pretty much Democrat th their whole lives uh, as they're here in the United States. But we're seeing a move. Everyone say move. We're seeing a move mm. of minorities saying we are waking up and we see the, the tactics that the left and the Democrats are doing by trying to give us these free passes and trying to hook us in. But, you know, we're, we're seeing that we need to side ourselves with truth and with righteousness. And we care about economy. I mean, look at President Trump. I mean, he did much more even for the African-American community in Chicago than even Barack Obama did. And I mean, we're seeing the unemployment rates within the black community in the United States. It's dropping, you know, there's uh, so much wealth that's happening. I mean, we're seeing Detroit, Michigan, you know, the jobs and industries, all these things are returning back again. Because like you said, Marcus, 
God will use somebody like President Trump that offends the church, that offends the world, but is a businessman, has a fear of God, and is bringing back business and, and godly order back to the United States. Go ahead, Marcus. Uh, all I'm going to say about that, because I think you pretty much said it all, but the Bible says my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. A lot of people, especially this millennial generation and stuff, it's all about how I feel and they don't like facts. Anytime that I've encountered anybody and I go to a very liberal you know, college here in Chicago, when you start hitting them with facts, they do not like it. And I'm talking about real hardcore facts. You know, the, the Democrats have been um, promising black folks stuff for so long and haven't done anything for them. All right. And a lot of people, um, they don't like when you talk about how the cages were actually built under Obama. They don't like when you talk about how CNN has an agenda and it's fake news. And they don't understand how these different news stations, they're owned by somebody. It's CNN and all that stuff, even Fox, they're no different than Facebook. Somebody owns it. So they're going to put the spin on the story that is beneficial with the way that they yeah, feel. Exactly. And if you, if you would just simply do the research, you would see how much... Unfortunately, there's just a lot of propaganda and lies. Look at all the polls that said Clinton was going to win. They were just so sure that she's going to win. I'll give you one example of just like the way they twist things, right? So one of the things they say is, well, Hillary Clinton, she won the popular vote. The Electoral College is, is uh, messed up, so she should have won. But if you go actually Google it, go look at the map of all the states, won, uh, states that were won by Trump, he literally won almost all of America. Like everything is red. You can go through and start counting it. But where Hillary Clinton won was California, New York, and Chicago. And then if you go Google and do more research, you will see the population in San Diego, Los Angeles, Chicago, and New York is a lot bigger. So she won less of America, but she won those big liberal cities, right? And so they say, oh, you know, America really wanted Cl uh, Clinton to be president. No, they didn't. The liberal cities did. And if you want to get deep with it, we can go into the spiritual warfare aspect of it about how places and he has certain strongholds in certain cities and things like that. Wow, that's good, Marcus. Let's go there right now, because, again, uh, Jesus loves cities. He is concerned with cities. The Bible talks about Jerusalem, a city on a hill that cannot be hidden. That's who you and I are. He talks about uh, the city of God, Zion, that's coming down from heaven. So uh, cities are so important, as we know, uh, especially uh, as we do research. Uh, you know, it's the coastal cities that are the cosmopolitan, that are the mega cities, are the most populated, you know, the coastal cities. You just named New York, uh, Los Angeles, which is a city I live in. Uh, you know, I know Chicago is a major city, you know, uh, uh, San Francisco, San Diego. So it's these hubs that right. have all the jobs, have all the tech, Silicon Valley, all the right. millennials, all the hipsters, all, all the people who are going for it, all the dreamers. So it's those hubs, those mega cities that are actually infiltrated by the stronghold. And again, the Bible talks about, uh, you know, uh, the principalities of the air, which means that a lot of times there's certain mindsets and there's certain doctrines that rule, uh, you know, a certain region of certain cities. And so I live in LA, so we got to understand that, you know, pornography, sexual perversion, violence, yep. all these things yep. that are trying to be aired out of the city. The Lord is trying to do the opposite and turn Hollywood to Hollywood, as we're seeing with Kanye West, Brad Pitt, all these other people, Justin Bieber. They're just the beginning. They're just the, the first fruits of all this that God's doing. But again, there's a strategy that the enemy has as he's mm -hmm. wanting to attack kids in, in school. All right. Uh, kids in high school, kids in elementary school right now. We're seeing that in Canada. Right. I mean, where the parents can't even talk about, uh, you know, uh, their, their children's uh, their child's what a sexual identity and their gender. Right. right? And now there's so much uh, manipulation and control from the government. Right. Isn't that crazy? And uh, I mean, but the same types of things are happening in California. The same types of things are the left and the Dems are trying to propagate that in the united states so what do you think our stance needs to be markets in midst of all of this propaganda fake news you know trying to conjure up on media social media and get people in that one new world order thought mind agenda and you know just really be anti-christ 
Um, we have number one as believers, you have a responsibility, especially pastors, to do your due diligence, study research before you speak, get into the presence of God and ask Him. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So our war is not against Democrats, and we're not saying like, oh, Republicans are so holy. But the reality is that somebody has to be used, just like the Babylonians were used, just like the Philistines were used. Now, right now, as of today, it's the Democrats. They're the ones talking about, oh, if you don't bow down to the LGBTQ agenda, we're going to strip churches of their 5013Cs. You don't hear that coming from Republicans. The Republicans, as of right now, and we're not saying we're saved, we're not saying they're the second coming of Jesus, but the Lord showed me in a vision clear as day, Trump was like a wall that was in front of the church that was holding back the hands that were trying to attack. Because you have to understand, these people, and I feel the Holy Ghost right now, these people have no conscience of God. So what they're trying to do is infiltrate positions in politics. And the Lord told me casual Christians will be casualties. And the way persecution is going to come in America, it's not going to be our, our hands getting cut off because we're too politically correct for that. It's going to be through legislation. Uh, the, uh, the Lord showed me one time there was a golden statue, just like with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And on the side of it, it was LGBTQ. I saw it clear as day. It was etched in. And this was like six years ago. And the Lord said there was going to be a sound for people to bow down. And and at first, when I was you know starting to say it, people were like, oh, whatever, this guy's crazy, you know, conspiracy, whatever, whatever. But now we're starting to see it. There's daycares in Chicago where they don't even want you to call the children boy or girl anymore. There are people in the UK, right? Because it isn't even just, just necessary America. Look at what's going on in the world who are getting sued for not using the right pronouns. Man, bro, I, I went to school the other day and in the syllabus, it had a little part in there where it was talking about proper pronoun use. So if the teacher was a man, but he identified as a woman, they wanted the class to call him a she. And some people say, oh, that's not a big deal. But if I'm a believer yeah. and God created man and said a man is a man and a woman is a woman, that is good. What the enemy is trying to get us to do is to bow down and say, okay, I'm going to bow down to the yeah. treasure and I'm going to call a man a woman. And you're speaking a lie out of your mouth. So what we have to do is have brothers like you who are willing, because you're going to get backlash for this. You are going to get backlash for this to step out and say, look, I have to expose the truth and the hopes is that people will see it and they'll say, man, I got to get serious about my prayer life. I got to get serious about being aware and knowledgeable and not just following my feelings. The Bible says there's a way that seems right to a man. Mm -hmm. And here's my other issue, bro. The Bible says broad <laughs> is the way that leads to destruction, narrow is the way that leads to eternal life. I think that we're in a dangerous place anytime, you know, when, when the school of fish is swimming, they're all going in a direction. So if I look next to me as a pastor and I see Hollywood is agreeing with me and I see all these liberal people who hate God and all these uh, people who don't even believe in God, atheists, and we're all agreeing and going and flowing, flowing in the same direction, something is wrong. If the Bible says the world will hate, people don't like preaching this. The Bible says the world will hate you for my name's sake. But we're so steady trying to be accepted. And that's that's the biggest problem. And I'm going to pass it back to you is the truth is most most men of God and pastors and, and people in positions, their heart is not right. They want the money. That's why they're not going to speak the truth. They want a big mega church. Mm -hmm. So they don't want nobody to leave. They don't want to offend nobody because they don't want to be persecuted. But Jesus said that if you don't take up your cross and follow me, you're not worthy of Come me. Yeah. So if you're not willing to pay the price after he paid the price, are you really a follower? Because if you really follow in his footsteps, and I end with this, Jesus was not killed because of the miracles that he was doing. Jesus was not killed. He, he was killed because of what came out of his mouth. Mm. It was the same thing with John the Baptist. What mm. John the Baptist was saying out of his mouth made people so mad, they cut his head off. What the apostles were saying out of their mouth, they, they didn't get killed because they were going around healing people and doing good works. Because of what they said out of their mouth, the people hated them and they wanted to kill them. So it's not going to be popular. And I think we got to man up, we have to woman up, and we have to accept that. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. Come on, so good. That's what we call a mic drop moment. And again, uh, you know, we're in a new decade, uh, 2020, but in the Hebrew calendar, I'm not sure if you study the Hebrew or if you follow up with that, Marcus, but in the Hebrew calendar, it's 5, 7, 80. And 80 in the Hebrew, 
the number 80 is shaped like a mouth, which means mm. the mouth is pay in Hebrew. So we're actually in a year and a decade of the pay of the mouth. And that's wow. why God has put President Trump in office to be his mouthpiece, to offend the hell out of <laughs> he everybody. He got a big mouth. He exactly. got a big, got a big mouth. mouth. Oh, you know, and people are always saying, oh, you know, what? Well, I, I like him, but why, why does he always tweet this? Why does he tweet that? Why does he, well, I think because President Trump is doing it on purpose. He's doing it on purpose to offend people, to shake them, and to keep them guessing. So in this decade and in this year, uh, you know, one of the things the Lord told me, Marcus, is that 2020 is the year of all years. And 2020 is the fight of all fights. 2020 is the decade of all decades. And we see that again with the re-election that's going to be happening, that's going to be coming very close. I mean, you know, I do believe that President Trump is going to win. And I like what yeah. you said earlier, Marcus, uh, that, uh, you know, that, uh, that uh, I forgot exactly what you said. I apologize. But something about uh, everywhere in America was red right. except for some of these big mega cities. And you know right. what? I mean, listen, Kansas City Chiefs just won. It's a yep. red. All right. Uh, God will speak through colors. God will speak through idioms, imagery, symbols, right. signs all the time. You see that all throughout the Bible. But right. God is speaking in America. Come on. He's speaking in the United States. Red. My nation will turn red again. And again, it's mm. not about the Republican Party, but it's about right. the policies that right. are in line with the truth, with the word of God. And it's about what honors God. Come on, abortion clinics are being shut down. Human trafficking rings are being shut down. Kids are being rescued by the droves. This is incredible. You know, the economy is going up. We're saying no to the trade wars of China, to socialism, to communism. Come on, I mean, I mean President Trump is standing up for our Christian rights, for our Christian biblical views. And we're seeing so much increase that's happening because of biblical truth and righteousness. So I, again, I believe 2020, this is a year of all years, it's a fight of all fights. And uh, you know, uh, I'm believing in California, say in my state, we are going to turn red because of minorities and millennials that are rising up and saying, you know, I've had enough of the Democratic Kool-Aid. I've had enough of drinking from this, uh, you know, the cistern pool. I'm done with this. And, you know, mm -hmm. I do believe that a lot of people are turning to the Lord in this season and they're being awakened. And again, what you were saying earlier, Marcus, mm -hmm. about the facts, a lot of people don't want to know about the facts. How do we deal with all the fake news and the propaganda how do we deal with all of the control? And, you know, I've, I've already uh, talked to our intercessor, Marcus, pray for us that I don't get put in Facebook jail or pray for us that this video doesn't get bad or disrupted, you know, because I know that this is God and we're, I'm going to continue doing these Prophecy USA. It's going to be incredible. But we know that Facebook, social media, all these things, it is controlled by the right. criminals. It's controlled right. by Illuminati. It's controlled by, and again, I'm not into conspiracy theories. This is just the truth. Right. It's obvious. Right. But it's controlled by the higher up one percentile that want us to be caught up in the one world order, mm. that one world order, you know? And so, but how do we discern propaganda, truth, fake news, real news? I mean, there's just so much that's cut, trimmed, you know, one shots that's taken, you know, with the young man, with the Native American, you know, with, because he has a MAGA hat. And then, right. you know, they totally manipulated, destroyed the whole story. And guess what? I think they got sued. That news yeah. station got sued, which is incredible, uh, which is great. I mean, but how do we discern that, Marcus? Talk to us. <laughs> Man, what you said was just so awesome, right? About that that one percent. Now, I don't get into the conspiracy theory things, and I know we're gonna talk about Kobe Bryant and stuff like that a little bit later. But check this out: Donald Trump, he had no reason to run for president. Most guys who get into politics, they come out richer than before. Let me give you a couple examples. Why did the news during the last election they kept talking about Russia, but they they refused to talk about what Russia apparently had revealed about Clinton? All year was Russia, Russia, Russia but not that Clinton had broke the law, which she did because I was in the military, not the fact that she got away with it. That there was a sailor that um, took a picture of something that was top secret and he went to jail. So she should be in jail. Another example is Hunter Biden and his father, right? Why is it that the news refuses to talk about the fact that this, this and you could call it white privilege or whatever you want to call it, right? That this guy was going over there getting this money and there's it's clear corruption there. 
but they don't care. They sweep it under the rug because they take care of their own, which lets you know there's an agenda. And the reason why they're so mad that, about Trump is because, yeah, he's he can be kind of arrogant and stuff like that. But the Lord allowed Trump to be in office as a sign for America to repent. Right. And their pride was hurt. They were so sure. Look at how they were talking when he first said he was going. He's never going to win. And they were making jokes of it. They were making a mockery of it. And what happened is God humbled them. And what's going to happen is he's going to humble them again when he wins. And they are going to have a choice. Either they can repent and say, man, I was wrong because I, I was I was talking to a pastor today. I said, man, you're wrong about the stuff that you're saying. You're talking from your feelings. And you're going to need to repent later on down the line. You're saying God told you this and told you that, and it's fake news. And so what you have to realize is the world has an agenda. And the way that you deal with the fake news, you can study, you can research for yourself and do your due diligence, right? If you really want the truth. But the biggest thing is just simply ask God to show you. One thing I will say, brother, before I give it back to you, just yesterday I was in the airport and this African-American sister walked up to me. And she, she just, you know, is getting all emotional and stuff. She's crying. And she said, you know, you've blessed my life. And then she said, you really have changed my perspective about the president. And everywhere I go, when I deal with minorities, they always tell me the same thing. And mm -hmm. one thing that is a real lie is this narrative that they keep pushing that is just uh, white, racist, uneducated people who are supporting yeah. Trump. Everywhere I go, even in California, when I went, there was a lot of Hispanics who support Trump as, as far as like the church Come goes on. because they see what's going on because they've asked the Lord to show them. And for all these people, thank you, Lord, for bringing it to my memory. Some people say Trump did this in the past and he said this and he said that. And I always tell them, look, I didn't, uh, you know, they didn't elect him because of his past was being, you know, spotless. They elected him for legislation and policies. Like, yeah, he says some stuff that I don't agree with. Sometimes I feel like he could have said this better. Are that better. But let me ask you this as a believer, who is the alternative that you would vote for that you could say is a better choice if you put it on the scales justly? Because you can't. If you be honest with yourself, whoever you stack them against, they're literally pushing the antichrist agenda. So it's it's just a matter of do you want the truth or do you want to be right? Most people don't want the truth. They want their truth. That's so good. Their truth. And again, Oprah Winfrey, whom I love and I totally respect, uh, you know, uh, I mean, she said on such a huge national platform, what I think the Oscars or the Grammys on live television, your truth. And again, it's not just about your truth, but it's right. about his truth. And, and that right. cannot be changed. And I think you said something so uh, great earlier, Marcus. I mean, the thing about President Trump is he cannot be bought. You know, he right. cannot be bought. He doesn't give a flying flip. He's about to turn right. every single table. We're seeing all the corruption being exposed with Harvey Weinstein. And guess what? The impeachment process is totally backfiring on the Democrats. You know, I <laughs> mean, it's, it's, a, it's a boomerang effect. That's not, exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so, but again, all of that was propaganda. But whatever right. the enemy, the devil tries to use against you or against uh, his anointed, it is going to backfire. And we're seeing that right now. I want to pray real quick right now, Mark, before we move on, because mm. you said something that I've, I really felt the anointing on, because you said that you're at an airport and an African-American sister came and was crying, was thanking you. I feel like right now, if you are a, a minority, uh, if you're black, Asian, Hispanic, or not even that, if, even if you're white Caucasian and you love President Trump, you, you believe in a stand, you believe in his stances, you believe in what's biblically true and right. I, we want to pray for you right now for you to not be afraid and for you to come out of hiding because the Lord wants you to use your voice, your platform. He wants you to be wise, all right? Innocent as doves, but as shrewd as snakes. That's the season we're in right now. But he wants you uh, to be wise and to release the prophetic truth and the word of the Lord because it's going to confound your enemy. It's going to silence his foes. And I really believe in this season, God is saying boldness. The reason why President Trump is in office right now is because he's not afraid to speak his mind. He's not afraid to go against the PC political correct spirit. And because he's actually helping us Christians, he's helping. He really cares about the United States of America. He really right. loves this nation as God does. So I, I just want to pray. Brother Marcus, I want you to just release that bold and portrait because I know that you've been a forerunner and a pioneer in this. So I just want you to release that over to people before we just move on. Please go ahead. 
Father, we just thank you for this moment. We thank you for every single person that has logged on to this live. We believe that if they are watching this or if they see it later, it was for a reason. We ask, Lord God, you told me that in 2020, you would give perfect vision to position people. Lord God, we ask, Lord God, that you allow their hearts to be moved, that they would be positioned in a place where they were willing to hear the truth, even if the truth goes against what they're taught, even if the truth is going to cost them, Lord God, uh, friendships and have maybe some kind of issues yeah. with family members, Lord God. Let them know that if they stand up for truth and righteousness, Lord God, it's not about being Republican. It's not about none of that. It's about what the truth is and what you're doing in the spirit, Lord God. Help them to realize that this isn't a white versus black, Hispanic versus white, yeah, yeah, or yeah. none of that kind of stuff. There are things that are happening in the spirit, Lord God. You said, matter of fact, in your word in Daniel 2.20, and you change the times and the seasons. You remove the kings and set up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. And in Romans 13, you said, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers for there is no power but of God, the powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisted the power, resisted the ordinance of God and they that resist shall receive of themselves damnation. We don't want to walk in damnation wow. because we're walking in ignorance, Lord God. We don't want to pray and try to rebuke something that you've set into motion. Help us to realize, Lord God, that you do things and, and that we need to be delivered from our religious minds. Yes. Lord, the, the, the Pharisees crucified your son. They crucified the move of God that was right in front of them. They knew all the scripture, but couldn't recognize what you were doing in the spirit. Help us not to make the same mistake that we crucify what you are doing, what you have set in place. Father, let people realize that you are in control. You are not surprised that Obama was president. You are not surprised at the yeah. LGBTQ movement. You are not surprised at what's going on with Trump. You're not surprised with fake news. You are in absolute full control and help us to walk in that confidence. In Jesus name. Wow, so good. Marcus, I want to keep praying right now. I feel the Holy Ghost. Yes, right now, the Lord has given people wisdom. He's given people the spirit of boldness. Uh, Shaka, he says, uh, no longer will you waver between two opinions, between Baal and Jezebel and the God Yahweh and Elijah. No longer will you have one foot and one foot out. But today, he is moving you out. He's moving you in. And I feel and I sense in the Holy Spirit that the Lord is causing many of you to begin to speak out boldly in your classes. There's a revolution that's happening, people of God. There is a reformation. I, I see that the Spirit of God is going to come upon many of you in your classes. Uh, you know, in your work setting, you know, even in your churches where some of your pastors, leaders, people around you are saying, you know, uh, wh why do you think like this? Why are you talking about these things? But you will not be silenced. This is a year where the muzzle is coming off of the mouths of the prophets. And I see right now, even as it says in the book of Joel, that, you know, your sons and daughters will prophesy. Come on, there's a prophetic unction, there's a prophetic gift. This is a war of Jezebel and Elijah that's going toe to toe, head to toe, even as we we saw, uh, you know, even as we're seeing in so many, you know, Antichrist, you know, Jezebelic, you know, uh, I mean, there's just so much perversion and and so much that's being released. Incubus, succubus is being released through the airways, meet away. But the Lord is releasing deliverance right now for your children. And we prophesy purity, righteousness uh, over the children of America, over the children of the United States. I thank you, Father. There's a remnant of young people a remnant of old and young that's rising up, hallelujah, rising up with truth, boldness, just like Daniel, just like Brother Marcus said, just like the spirit of Daniel. Uh, Daniel uh, and his three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do it now, do it now, do it now in the name of Jesus. So good. Brother Marcus, time time is going, is flying by right now. It's um, fine, brother. Whatever yeah, you want to do. Lord. Yeah, come on. Come on, guys, if you're enjoying this right now, I want you to like and to share right now because we want to talk about right now uh the kansas city chiefs and the prophetic word by prophet bob jones now